Okay, I'm going to show you what I got going on here. I got out about four of the shop towels. And I have put two coats of Big Top uh, on here as a top coat. And I got out clear wax and some dark wax. And instead of making my own wax, I decided to go through the dark, just go with the dark wax because it does match pretty well with this and it's gonna look good. This piece is done and we're about to do the top so I can uh, show you the whole part. But I think this turned out great. I'm happy with it and see how much darker it is. A little bit more aged looking than the top. So we're about to do that there. And I also got out this tool, this which is like a roller cleaner. You can use any tool you want. I have the indentations here on front. Let me see if I can lean this up and show you real quick. Can you see that now? In here, there are, I don't exactly want to use the point. I don't want to scratch anything else up, but there are like, and I scratched it up, indentations in here, uh, like crevices, but I'm going to have to sit down in front of it with my glasses on to do this. But what I'm going to do is scrape out some of the paint that got into those crevices before I start sanding, just to give that a little more detail so that when we do the same thing we're fixing to do to the top, to this area, it will have a little bit more of the crevices to go into. I don't have a wax brush here with me, and so I don't have them here. So this is always plan B. Never let not having the tool that you're used to using stop you from working. There's always something else that you can do. So I'm gonna get behind this so that my honey's not in the way. And I'm just gonna stip, stick the napkin in there, get some on it, and let's get it on the surface. The reason that we do this is if I was to go straight on, and I'm getting these edges too. If I was to go straight on with the dark wax, it would very possibly be too dark in some of these crevices because I did leave this a little bit rough in some areas and we are wanting that to show up but we're not wanting it to you know look like we dropped soot on it so we're putting down a coat of clear wax first and one other thing if we were to still sort of get too dark with the wax in any area, you use your clear wax as an eraser. So if it got too dark right here and too much got on there, maybe I missed it some when I went through the first time with the clear wax, then you just get some more clear wax on your rag, hit right back at it and it'll just wipe right back off. And you can uh, wipe at it to get to the amount of dark that you wanna have on there. And I just used this small chip brush you see where I used this one last night and I'll throw it away after this because it won't be worth that much to try to save and clean off, you know what I mean? It'll take a lot of effort. So the first thing I'm going to do is go around the edges to all the areas that I want to be the darkest and put my wax on there first. That's definitely all the way around the edges, deep into the corners, definitely in these side areas. Just trying to a little bit stay in the direction of my brush strokes as well. You normally don't do a really large area at one time. So I have all this on there and I want it to be sinking in, but I'm gonna go ahead and start on this end. And let's fill her up. I'm just folding this over where the same one where you can see where a lot of the clear wax was. I'm not wanting that to necessarily be the part. Now I'm rubbing it in and doing the light areas first because I don't want too much to stay on there. But still leaving the dark, the edges. You can do this with a soft cloth, a little baby diaper, one of these lint-free shop towels, or uh, a wax brush, and buff it off with whatever kind of towel you have. I'm gonna go ahead and go 
my first sort of stroke around these edges a little bit because I don't want it to be too, too dark and showing where the actual brush marks were. I'm going to look at where this sort of ended. Continue. Get down in those lumps and bumps and crevices. Doing just a round and circular motion to sort of make sure it gets deep down into any of the brush marks that are there. See? Then I'm going to fold that out and try to remove some of it this way. Fold it again and then buff from the beginning to the end. Definitely looks a lot older. Can you see the difference there? Be careful where you put your hands too. For one, my hands are nasty right now, but the heat of my hand will melt some of that wax and leave an impression of my hand wherever it was at. Putting the top coat underneath this it was not absolutely necessary but for one when you're going to use a dark wax it keeps it from penetrating too much and really ruining your finish so it makes this job that we're doing right now a lot easier but it also even though wax gives a protective finish the top coat gives a better protective finish and so since I'm thinking that someone may use this for a desk in the long run, the top surface needs a little more protection than, than just wax would give. If you just wanted wax and that's the only finish you wanted on there and that's all, that's all your client wanted on there, you can do that, but you will have to add wax, apply wax again about every six months to keep the finish up. Even though, you know, with this particular clay based paint, the DIY paint, it's going to dry to, uh, you know, cure in about 30 days to a hard finish. It's still, if you're going to want the nice finish on top, you're going to need to re-wax. But with it having the big top underneath there, that's the re-waxing becomes uh, something you can do, not something you need to do. almost don't know if it doesn't have more than I want over here so let me show you that erasing part. Just going to get a little bit on there again and see right here it's a little darker and that's one of the areas I wanted to be a little lighter. So see how it's coming right up? That clear wax just became my eraser and I'm lightening up that dark finish. And that's it. I may uh probably won't, but I could try to give this a half hour or so and buff it again. But it's already so shiny and so pretty. And I believe it's already how I want it. I love it. I love, love, love it. And I'm going to just continue around sanding the bottoms. I'm about backwards compared to most people as far as going ahead to put a, a finish on here. See how this is compared to each other now. It's matching now that the waxes are the same. And I'm going to now sand the sides, the front, and the legs, and then wax. Do the same exact thing that I did, just did here, but I'm not going to put 
the top coat. I'm not gonna put the big top. This is just gonna be clear wax and dark wax. And we'll not have, just like we just did right here, all over the rest of the piece. It's just that I'm gonna skip the big top step that I did earlier on those. So if anything interesting comes up, I'll, sh <laughs> I'll pop in and show you. If not, a little, little more of the same. I'm gonna show you a couple more things real quick. I'm sanding on these pieces. And I'm gonna show you this one first where this has really helped. I'm using my green scrubby and I sanded first with my sanding pad and got it relatively smooth. Now I'm to the areas where I wanna go a little deeper and a little, little bit more distressed just on the edges and in where the seams are and crevices are and things that I wanna make sure are worn a little bit that we're gonna use the, the dark wax on over later. And I'm just pushing this down in my water, dampening the end of this so that as it's scraping off around the edges to distress, it's also pulling off a little bit more of the paint in a couple of the areas where it would look nice for it to go down a couple more layers deep. And especially around the round part of the legs, the area that I'm wanting to distress and get in deep on those, I'm putting a good bit of water in there on that. And then I'm gonna up and down it and just get a couple of, of those layers of paint scratched down and off. Then back to the regular sanding pad to sort of smooth off in those areas and reach down to another layer. And the water really does help to another layer. This is smooth now and it's dry where I've just did the same thing to that side uh, as I did to this side. And I just wanted to show you without putting the top coat on there because this is not gonna be, a, this is gonna be a hardly used surface, this little front piece, how sort of different it looks with the wax going on this. It brings that color out, getting, that's a decent amount there. Let's see how it immediately brings the color back. Oh yeah, this looks actually way better than the top coat part does because being able to see through to that farm fresh, the greenish part that was underneath the berry bottom looks very, very nice. And that didn't really come through on the top as much with the uh, big top. So I'm getting that on there real good. Trying to make sure and push some of this into those crevices, getting sort of more on here than you would think I'd need on there because I'm pushing it into those crevices, but I'm gonna use the same amount to go ahead and come down here on the leg. And then we're gonna do, as soon as this is on here real good, we're gonna do the same thing and go back over it real quick with the dark wax. Now I'm just gonna, where's that brush? Here's the little brush I was using a minute ago. So I'm looking at the areas that have details. Let's get that dark in there. Around the edges. I'm gonna do this top piece first and then come back and get the leg. I wanna just make sure and get my first amount there. And then I'm gonna go ahead and go with my brush strokes and get it the rest of the way. And let's start with the center. See how much darker it is there than it was on top? That's because it's absorbing in more faster because it didn't have the uh, clear wax. I mean, it didn't have the big top beneath the clear wax to protect it. That's obviously way too dark. Buff, 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 and then we'll erase. So this takes a little bit more elbow grease than the top did, but we're using less product. So depending on which look that you want, if you want more aging and distressing, do your clear wax, go on with your dark wax. Um, if not, 
then you can put your uh, big top or other uh, clear coat on first. Let's erase some of that. Just trying to go using my finger in here like this, pushing with that finger to get, to leave the edges darker, but get sort of a seam in between them that's lighter. We want the center part to be really light. Think about the areas where if the sun was shining on it, that it would bounce back off of it at, and those are the areas that you want to be lighter. So those are the areas we're gonna sort of erase first. See how it's lightening up already? Now let's spread that out to the edges. Erase a little more of that. And this thing's looking old. I think that looks awesome. I'm gonna see if I can take the foam down. It still needs to be buffed, of course, to get to a shine. See, there's a little bit closer of a look at just that piece. And there's the one that has been sanded, but not yet waxed and detailed. And then compare that to the top that we just did. See how much more detail and with the dark in there than the other one? And then see how much more sort of abused, but even with the green color showing through, this one is than the top part. There's the whole top, around the edges. See, this part's not even been sanded yet. See how rough and textured it still is? That part we still have to sand. And I love how, I don't know if you can see the shine that you get from the wax there, but it's very nice. All right, <laughs> I'm burning up. Thanks, and as soon as there's another cool thing to show you, I'll do it. Bye.